Okay, now I want to create an object called a bicycle mechanic. All right, so I'm going to say function, uh, let me just call it mechanic, and uh, probably just has name. Okay, and then let's say this start name equals name. So I'm basically creating a function that's meant to be a constructor. All right, so I'm going to say var, just going to call him Mike is new mechanic and I need to pass in the name as an argument to the call I'm just gonna pass in the name Mike and now with this we have a mechanic instance with the name Mike now what I want to do is give Mike access to the inflate tires functionality I want Mike to be able to inflate the tires of any bike that's given to him Okay, right now the inflate tires functionality is in the bicycle object. So every bike actually knows how to inflate itself. But what I want to do is provide that capability to the mechanic as well. So what I can do is give a function to the mic instance, right? I can have a function called inflate tires. So I can say mic dot inflate tires equals Let's say bicycle one dot inflate tires. All right, so we know that inflate tires is a property which happens to be a function. So I'm basically taking that function instance and then creating a new property on the mechanic object and giving that name inflate tires as well. So I can call mic dot inflate tires and uh, I basically run this anonymous function that's over here. Now what happens if I call mic dot inflate tires. If I were to do this, what would happen? What would happen is that this function would get called. All right, so just to focus on the part that I've highlighted here. The fact that it happens to be inside another object is immaterial now because it's being executed in the context of the mic object. So all that you have left over here in the mic object is what's highlighted here, which is an anonymous function, which does this dot tire pressure plus equals three. All right, so now when this function gets executed in the context of the mic object, what would be the value of the this reference here? Remember what I've told you, when you say object reference dot function, and that function is using the this reference, the this reference points to that object instance. So in this case, this will refer to the mic instance, right? So this object, mic object, that's what the this is gonna to refer to when this function gets executed in the context of the mic instance. Now we have a problem. This dot tire pressure, in the case of mic, is going to be undefined, right? So there's no tire pressure property on the mechanic. So it is going to be undefined. So undefined plus equals three is gonna give a not a number value. So when I say mic dot inflate tires, it's gonna try and execute the inflate tires on the mechanic itself, which is not a good idea, and it's not gonna work. So what I would like to do is be able to pass in the bike uh, object that I want Mike to inflate the tires off, right? I want Mike to be able to inflate the tires of any bicycle that's passed, not just one particular bike and definitely not try to apply that operation on himself. Now what I could do is change this function to say rather than it referred to this, just accept the bicycle object as an argument and then change the tire pressure for it. The fact that it's referring to this means that it can execute only in the context of a bicycle. It cannot execute anywhere else. And that's where we have this problem, right? But let's say this is not feasible. Let's say I don't want to change the function itself. I still want it to refer to this. But what I want to do here is when I'm calling the inflate tires in the context of Mike, I want to somehow circumvent the behavior that JavaScript has by default, you know, this referring to itself. I want to substitute the value. I want to send a new object and say, hey, JavaScript interpreter, I'm calling this function, and that function could potentially use this keyword. Whenever it uses the this keyword, I want you to bind the this keyword to this other object rather than the default that you normally do, right? I want to somehow tell the interpreter to use another object for using the this keyword. And the way to do this is by using the fourth way of calling functions. The fourth way to call a function is, let me actually put this over here so that it's isolated out from the other discussion that we've been having. Let's say I have a function foo, 
Okay, so this is one way to call the function. Another, the fourth way to call the function is by using a property on the function object. You remember when you have a function foo, when you have a function foo, this is actually an object, right? Foo is actually an object and it has some properties. One of the property on the foo is a function called call. Yes, you heard that right. It might twist your brain a bit, at least it did mine when I first learned about it. So let me repeat that again. A function in JavaScript is an object, right? And that object can have properties. Turns out every function object in JavaScript has an out of the box property, which happens to be another function, right? So that property is called call. So I can say foo.call and I'm gonna get another function that's that comes out of the box. Now, what does this call function do? Well, true to its name, it lets you call the function foo. So I can do something like this and it basically calls foo. So this line, line 36, is exactly the same as just calling the function itself, line 37. Okay, so this does exactly what this does, just calls the function. So now you might be wondering who in their right mind would do something like this when you can do something like this, right? Rather than just say the function open close, why would you access a call property on the function and execute that, which is essentially doing the same thing as just calling the function directly? Well, the reason the call property is important is that it takes an argument, which could be an object. Okay, I can pass an object over here. Now, what does passing an object to the call property do? What it does is it takes this object and binds this object, whatever you pass over here, it takes it in and binds it to the this reference on the function foo. So now what's gonna happen is if you happen to have a this reference in the function foo, let's say this dot abc equals def, right? Let's say you have some code over here like this. Now when you pass an object to the call property of the function, the JavaScript interpreter does two things. It calls the function like you would expect it to, but when it executes the function, it binds the this reference on that function to the object that's passed as an argument to the call function. So now whenever you access this in this function, this is bound to the object that's passed. So you can basically choose what object you want the this reference to point to. This is different from the other three methods that we've talked about where the this reference is based on a rule, right? It's implicit. Given a method, you know exactly what the this reference points to. In the case of executing as a normal function without any context, this refers to the global. If it's in the context of an object, it refers to the object. If it's new, it refers to the newly created function. You don't have a choice there. But here, you have a choice about what object that this reference points to. You can choose whatever it is that you want, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. If not, you know, feel free to rewind and watch it again. This is an important way in which you can call functions by binding the this reference to an arbitrary object, an object of your choice. All right, now, now that you understood this, let's look at how that applies over here. I have an object, which is a mechanic, and I wanna call the inflate tires function on that object. And I know that the inflate tires function uses the this reference to get hold of the bicycle whose tire pressure it needs to inflate. Now I wanna change this to pass in a bicycle whose tire pressure I want to inflate and not inflate uh, the tire pressure of the mechanic itself, which doesn't make any sense. So in order to do this, I need to change what the this reference binds to over here, which is perfect because now we know how to do that. We just need to do the call method on the function that we are calling and pass in the object that we want to change, all right? So let me actually run this, let me clear this out. And uh, I am going to not call this for now. And I'm just going to reload and run over here. And now if I access bicycle one, you see it has all the usual stuff. It has a tire pressure for me and I have inflate tires. I can of course call the bicycle one dot inflate tires and inflate the tire pressure off bicycle one by three and now it's 31. Now let's, uh, let's look at the mechanic. I have a mechanic called Mike who has the name property and it has the inflate tires property as well. Now if I were to call Mike.inflate tires, what's gonna happen? 
this inflate tires is going to try and apply the function on the mic instance. The mic does not have a tire pressure property, obviously. So if I try inflate tires, it's going to say mic dot tire pressure plus equals three, which is going to get undefined plus equals three, which is going to be not a number. If I were to try this and access the mic object again, you see tire pressure is now not a number because it tries to add three to the tire pressure of the mic object, which doesn't make sense. And what I want to do is call mic dot in inflate tires, this function, but bind it to bicycle one. I want to inflate the tire pressure of bicycle one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the function instance and I'm going to use the call property of that function. And in this call property, if I were to call it directly, it's going to be exactly the same as this, right? But I don't want to call it directly. What I want to do is bind this to bicycle one. So I'm going to say bicycle one here. And now if I were to call it, Guess what happens? If I refer to the object mic, it's still undefined, which wouldn't have changed anyway. But if I were to access bicycle one, you see here the tire pressure has now increased. It's 34 compared to 31 it was before. All right, now I can change the tire pressure of any bicycle. So let's say get bicycle two. The tire pressure is 33. So I'm going to ask Mike to inflate the tire pressure of bicycle2 now, all right? So I'm going to say mic.inflateTires.call of bicycle2, which binds the this reference in this function to bicycle2. Now, if I were to access bicycle2, you see the tire pressure has increased, all right? So this is the fourth way in which you can call functions, which is using the dot .call property of the function you're trying to call, and you can bind different objects to it. So let's quickly recap the four different ways in which you can call functions and what the this reference means in each case. So here's what we've looked earlier. These are the four different ways in which we can call functions. Now that we know the fourth way, I'm going to add that here, foo.call, and then it can take an optional argument, which is what the this binds to. All right, so these are the four ways. So hopefully this was clear. Uh, I definitely encourage you to play around with this, write a few functions, call them with these different ways of calling functions and see what the this reference is in each case. Okay, before we wind up this video, I should let you know that the this reference is one of those really confusing concepts in the JavaScript programming language. And uh, even a lot of the advanced developers fail to understand some of the nuances of the this reference. So if you've been following along and you feel fairly confident in understanding what we've been uh, talking about so far, you should be proud and give yourself a pat on the back. And if you feel that you are confused about some of these concepts, I definitely encourage you to revisit the relevant portions of the video and hopefully it'll make more sense the second time.